Yes, Uncle Ben is back at it again, y'all. He is back at it again. You know, Trump's very subservient African-American that's in his cabinet. Ben Carson is definitely the biggest bootlicker in the Trump administration. This came out in political. February 7th, 2020, Ben Carson points to Mara Largo to show that Trump is not a racist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ben in the cabin wants you to know his master is not a racist. Housing Secretary Ben Carson appeared to stray from prepared remarks as he introduced Donald Trump on Friday, declaring that the president is not a racist and pointing to how he treats the members and service workers at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. Yeah, we did see how he treated people. The two people that testified against him during the impeachment trial, he fired them. Yes, Ben, we see how he treats people. The comments came at the beginning of a North Carolina event touting the administration's Opportunity Zone program, which aims to spur growth in underserved areas. Mm -hmm. No, it's only because it's an election year. And no defense, but I don't see nothing going on around me from Donald Trump. And I doubt if Most of my subscribers are seeing some big difference. He's a man who is deeply driven by a sense of kindness and compassion. Carson began looking down at his notes. You know, talking to the people who drive the cars and park the cars at Mar-a-Lago, they love him. Oh yeah, there, there's some that's that's some big old proof right there, Ben Carson. <laughs> oh, the people who wash the dishes because he's kind and compassionate, Carson said of the president. Okay, so you're talking about the help. You went to the help, and the help loves the the president. Well, I guess, Ben, you would know you're the help, too. He continued, when he bought Mar-a-Lago, he was the one who fought for Jews and Blacks to be included in the clubs that were trying to exclude them. You know, people say he's a racist. He is not a racist. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh-uh. Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben. Looking back at his notes again, Carson went on. It's certainly an act of compassion to help our fellow Americans who are struggling in their neighborhoods. Oh, he's doing all of that. I mean, how many of my subscribers are in the hood? Is he helping you there? Okay. Well, according to Uncle Ben, he is. An impromptu defense of the president's interactions and reference to at his glitzy West Palm Beach resort comes as Trump aggressively courts Black voters as part of his re-election campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trump is offering money. I know the Democrats must be beside themselves. Trump redoubled these efforts on Friday, accusing Democrats of treating Black voters badly and only coming around because they want your vote. Well, you all do that. Okay, Republicans have not been good to the Black community. None of you are good to us. So, you know, when you point at one group, to me, I'm not impressed by that because history shows neither party has been good to the black community. Neither one. Well, you know, like Janet Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? 
Okay, don't point to some shit that happened centuries ago. What have you done for me lately? They only come around two months before the election, Trump said. And then right after the election, they say, bye-bye. We'll see you in two years or years, right? Yeah, but all politicians do that. All politicians. Trump, you have not talked about the black community even in your daily, um, when, I, when I see you on a daily basis talking to the press, you're not talking about the black community either. But see, 2020 is the election year, and even you're running your mouth. You know, he's finished the first term. How many of us in the black community heard what Donald Trump was going to do? He hasn't done anything. He hasn't done any more than a previous president when it comes down to us. Trump heralding the improving employment numbers among African Americans reflected on his efforts to get Black voters to switch from the Democratic Party to supporting him. And I said, all these bad numbers what the hell do you have to lose? Well, what, what did black people gain? Because you're lying about the unemployment numbers. That's been debunked. You know, you and your cronies running around here talking about things are better for black people. Really? Uh, well, I, you must not be talking to black people. That's all I got to say. I'm not hearing this from black people and I'm part of the black community. How come I'm not hearing it and you are? Get out of here. Nothing has gotten better. Trump said, adding an aside about how he decides whether or not to use the word hell, depending on his crowd. Mm -hmm. And do you remember all the fights he had on Twitter? with black athletes and him dragging black Congress women and everything. Don't have a bout of amnesia, y'all. Trump has not been good to black folks. Now I know he want to pat himself on the back and say he was when Colin Kaepernick was taking a knee. Look how badly he dragged him. See, they don't want you to have that right to a peaceful protest. You know, they say it, but they don't really mean it. When I go, what do you have to lose? It's like, let's fall asleep. But I remember I said, it, uh, it this night, what it was, 25,000 people, I said, what the hell do you have to lose? the place went crazy. Yeah, because there were no black people. <laughs> it was just a bunch of white people that went crazy. There was no black people there. It wasn't hardly no black people in that crowd when he said that. There were white people going crazy. The campaign has sought to make inroads with the traditionally heavily democratic voting uh, block. Yeah, because without black people, Democrats cannot win. I already showed you that emphasizing the criminal justice reform legislation. He signed and promoting opportunity zones despite having faced accusations of racism going back decades. Mm -hmm, Central Park Five. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last year, Trump picked feuds with several lawmakers of color using racist rhetoric. And just a week ago, he expanded his administration's travel ban to include several more African countries, including Nigeria, drawing um, renewed attention to his past remarks about shithole countries in Africa and his specific complaint that Nigerians coming to the U.S. will never go back to their huts. They don't live in those huts, but ladies and gentlemen, like I said, don't lose sight that neither one of these parties have been good to the black community. Okay. Neither one. So 
you know, pointing at one party and then trying to prop up the other to me is counterproductive. There is no history of Trump going above and beyond for the black community, just like the previous presidents. We don't see any of this above and beyond stuff. You know, as long as they can do things that really don't matter or very little baby steps, they're okay with that. See, as long as it don't cost them a penny, they're okay. But as soon as we start saying reparations and talking about the things we want, then all of a sudden that's a problem. So nah, don't, don't jump for joy over this bullshit. You know, Trump's attention on the black community is downright laughable. The Democratic Party has done nothing but prove they are no different than the Republicans as far as their attitude is concerned about the black community. Neither one of these people are worthy of our vote on any side. So I don't care what Uncle Ben said. He can say whatever he wants. He is nothing but a good house Negro. But y'all, please tell me what you think of this article. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.